Hi guys, welcome back to Raptors Garage. I was just out filming a little update, well, a little walk around video of my truck and uh, I thought I'd do a quick update video just to let you know what's going on. Basically nothing. <laughs> Nothing's going on. There's, um, we're struggling to get videos between uh, me and Chris. Uh, I do the filming, Chris does the editing and um, it's very difficult to get the files to each other. So I haven't been filming that much because I can't go to Chris and he's literally stuck around the corner as well and I can't go and see him to actually <laughs> ten give minutes up the road. He's 10 minutes up the road. But this is more of a thank you video to all the people who've sent us messages, uh, asking how, how we are, what we're doing, are we putting videos up. We're trying, that's basically the whole yes. thing. We are trying to put videos up. Um, very trying. It's very trying. Um, as you can see, Karen's in a uniform, so she's really busy as well. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know what Karen does, she's a carer and she's out and about in all this. What's going on, she's out every day. Yeah. And I'm pretty much stuck here. I've got a little bit of work, but not much. Um, so I'm going to try to film more videos. And if you look behind me, Grey Worm's in the garage. That's another update for you. So we can you know, get some videos done on this. I've got some stuff here and I've got some stuff I can be doing so I'll get some videos of that done. So this is the bit where Chris actually now appears in the video and tells you how well he is. Thanks Paul and uh, welcome back to Raptors Garage 2.0. Um, I'm in Angie's front room and fortunately I brought the computer with me on this occasion before we got locked down and two weeks later I'm still here. And basically I've seen uh, Paul once from a distance as he threw an SD card over to me with some footage on to make you guys a video to keep you up to date as to what's going on. So yeah, as you can see, Paul's carrying on with a few bits and pieces over at his end. I'm kind of just stuck here, unable to do much and it is frustrating because yeah, Paul is literally a seven minute drive away. But can't very well set a good example for the kids by basically allowing me to go out and see my mates if we're not allowing the kids to go out and see their friends. Plus of course we've got to protect Karen because she's out there every day still doing her healthcare work. And Angie's a um, teaching assistant, so she's still on a rotor in order to go in and help with some of the kids that are still at the schools who um, belong to key workers. So yeah, guys, obviously bringing videos to you at the moment is a bit difficult. We'll try and keep some updates going. I've got a couple more videos that Paul's given me that I can put together for you. Uh, but we've got a ton of stuff coming in the future. My disco is sat around at Paul's at the moment, um, absolutely full of bits and pieces that I've been ordering, ready to put on. So we've got loads of videos coming. Uh, so before we get on with this video, Paul's going to do a walk around of the Long Ranger chopped up discovery that we've just completed. Obviously, he's done most of the work because I haven't always been able to get over when he's been doing stuff. But you've seen all the videos on that. We're going to be doing it again at some point in the future, obviously to mine. So we'll try and do some more detailed videos of exactly what's been going on when we do this kind of conversion. Uh, but I've got to say one big shout out to Neil over at Forby. You know, Neil supports us. Um, with the channel and everything and gives us um, things to try out but I'm going to do a big shout out to that guy because if you don't know some of the stuff he makes he uses a 3D printer he's got a couple of 3D printers on the go making stuff um, that he sells on his website he's not been doing that he's been using those um, in the last couple of weeks basically to make uh, protective face shields and he's been donating them to his hospital his local hospital for the staff so big shout out to that guy for doing that that's absolutely awesome so guys if you can support him in any way jump on the website, order a few bits. Same with our other sponsors. You know, if you're not strapped for cash, I know a lot of you are going to be strapped for cash. But if you're thinking of buying bits ready for when this all uh, finishes or if you're stuck at home and you want something to do, you know, why not check out some of their gear and see what you want. But enough of me waffling, guys. Thanks for all the messages checking in, how we are. We're all good. Um, we've been getting up to a few bits and pieces, as you can see from what's uh, been playing over me talking. But... Um, Check out this video of Paul's truck and see you next uh, on a video in the near future. My hair looks like shy. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> and there you go, that's how Chris is doing and Ange and the kids. So thanks for watching guys. Um, we'll try to do as much as we can for you and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!
Hi guys, welcome back to Raptors Garage. In these weird times of being quarantined at home, virtually no cars on the road, but I've been busy in the workshop and I've got stage one of the truck finished. It's all done, ready for the canopy to go on once we built it, when we can get the materials. So in this episode, I'm going to give you a walk around of the truck and show you what we've done. So yeah, let's start at the front with this walk around. Now, not much of this has actually changed. Um, in fact, I don't think anything that the front's actually changed at all. Um, let me just think. Um, oh, I've had a new light bar because the old one leaked water in. So that's one of the changes. And you've seen the video on me doing the radiator upgrade. So we've had a bigger radiator. That's it at the front. So you know everything's sort of further back. That's where the changes start taking place. But uh, the biggest thing I've noticed is the truck's a hell of a lot lighter. It's the suspension feels firmer. I know the chassis is stiff because of the way we've welded everything. Uh, it just feels a lot more solid. It just feels more planted. I can't wait to get this out and try it. But uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I haven't really thought this through. I'm just filming it on you know, sort of the hoof at the moment. But uh, the light bar's altered. Let's go and have a look at the light bar. Yeah, like I was saying, the light bar's altered. Now, because the way the roof goes on, because it's now fiberglass, we've got no gutters to actually put the, um, the mounts in. Because these mounts normally go into the gutter. So what I've done is made these brackets. Now, these are a lot stronger than the original gutter mounts, because literally you only had two bolts going into the gutter. Now it actually goes onto a piece of plate. That's three mil thick. Then onto some... Um, I think that's 2.5 mil, 2.5 mil plate, and it's actually bolted in up there and into the pillar. It's all riv nutted in. So, because we've got the bush cables on, um, I just made that more solid. So, well, we can move the entire truck with it, so it's fairly stiff, that is. Let's have a close look. This wraps round, uh, is riv nutted up into the actual back of the gutter. That's actually the roof support along there. So that's rib nutted into there and into the pillar. So that is loads stronger than the original. So I'm happy with that. That's one of the modifications we've done. So while we're here, we might as well have a look at the interior. Now the interior, obviously the front section down here is all original. Nothing's changed there. Center console, all those bits have stayed the same. But uh, let me just open this camera up for you. Now in the back we've got that uh, racking, now there is a normally first aid kits in there, in the middle where the velcro is hanging. There is equipment down the back of the seats but I haven't got a light with me so I can't show you that. But uh, where the velcro is hanging I, uh, I had to take the first aid kits out yesterday because my lad crashed his bike and we didn't want to go to hospital and he's a right mess. So uh, all, the, all the field dressings came out and he's uh, been patched back together. So it's always worth having first aid kits. Um, if you have a look back up there, you've all seen the video of the CB and all the, all the centre console going back in. That's all original, uh, just trimmed and shaped to go back in to go with the new headliner. Even even now, now there's virtually no cars on the road, but there's always tractors. So uh, that's the interior, and I'm quite happy with that. Right, guys, I thought I would give you a look inside. I've uh, just climbed in the truck so that's the racking like i said that's where the first aid kit is got things hanging lights all that sort of stuff but one of the things i am happy with is i've got new speakers as well they're great i can actually hear the radio and there's bobble headed heimdall all lit up and a quick look at that roof console So I've got all my stuff back in there, as it was originally. So that's the interior. And I'm really happy, it's a nice place to be. I've got the water tank filler in as well. Um, at this moment in time, I don't think the video's actually come out because Chris hasn't been able to come and uh, collect the cards off me. But yeah, so my water tank's in. So let's get on and have a look at the rest of the bed. So there isn't actually much to see on the top of the bed. Um, 
it's just the the checker plate aluminium bed obviously we've got the long ranger cab there that is awesome uh you know how much we like that when we put it in so uh that's basically you know the crux of this build isn't it that uh long ranger cab but the a lot of the work that's gone on with actually building this is actually underneath the tray now some of this stuff you'll have actually seen me build and uh, a couple of bits you won't because they never got recorded. Now obviously water tank, uh, that's all in, working, but it hasn't got a tap, I've got to order one. Uh, we've got mud flaps for obvious reasons, we need them. Uh, and there's a locker box under here which you haven't seen so uh, let's have a look at this locker box. Like I said, we've got the water tank there. We had this big void and for a couple of couple of three days I'm walking around the workshop. We put the checker plate on the top and you could see straight through top of the fuel tank and there's all this wasted space. Now this is just an aluminium box, it's just an aluminium box that's been riveted and uh, a bit of, I've TIG welded the frame up and just um, what's it uh, riveted the outer skin on. It is watertight but the, I'm still waiting for the door seal to come and that's my compressor now my compressor's in there uh, with pipes over to the air tank I've got room to put my recovery equipment in um, right at the back is a bag with just like my tyre gauge and it's got the actual inflator hose for the compressor that goes on the other side through the air tank that compressor then will pressurise up to 150 psi it says uh, I don't know what the blow off pressure is on it it has got a blow off um, like an over pressure valve on it uh, I haven't yet run it all up because my Anderson plug hasn't turned up <laughs> so I've snipped, the, I've snipped the, the, you know, the crocodile clips off uh, and I'm going to wire it directly into this winch relay box because the winch relay box has got two permanent power feeds going to it uh, so I can tap off them, it saves me running an extra set of cables in that's max loads 45 amps so um, seems an ideal place because the cables run down the chassis here they're all lined all the way through the chassis so there's no point in running another set of cables down to power that so I'll just tap off the back of this box have an Anderson plug and be able to just pull the lead out plug it in, turn it on, job done. So uh, that's where all my recovery equipment is. And like I said there is a neoprene gasket coming for that but when that's going to turn up I don't know. So that's everything sort of underneath the truck which you know some of you've seen some of you haven't but I know you haven't seen that that's new but uh, I'm really loving this now. So now we're onto the back of the truck. This is my favourite part. I love the look of the back of this. These lights, these are the same as the lights that are on Chris's L200, and I really like them. Now we've rebuilt the back of Chris's truck, uh, and it looks identical to this now. He's copied it, uh, but that'll be in a different video. Um, that's my original winch tray, but with the sides cut off because we had the wheel carrier on there. So I've kept my winch box, that's in. Um, the winch is in there and I just think this gives this such a slick look and the departure angles are brilliant, I've got nothing to catch up these sides I've got my NATO hitch for when we eventually get the trailer done which will be, you know, whenever but, uh, no, nah, love this back, I think it's amazing but, uh, yeah, I'm actually speechless, I just love it so let's have a walk around the other side So one of the other bits you didn't see us do was putting the fuel system in. That's the back of the storage box and obviously you know what the rest of the bits are. Eww. Mastic. Uh, the rest of the bits you didn't see me do was this fuel pipe. Now this is the original filler neck. Um, taken straight out of the other truck. Well, taken straight out of this truck actually just lifts there. It's uh, held on with a big jubilee clip at the moment and I think that's how it's going to stay. There's nothing that's permanent as a temporary fix is there? This is some polished aluminium tube and these are silicon hoses 
Um, I'm assuming you know there shouldn't be any issue with silicon and rub and diesel. Um, I really can't find anything about it that uh, silicon's going to uh, diesel's going to be affected by. Get that right. That diesel is going to affect the silicon. There we go. But uh, yeah, so that's it. That's the whole walk around of the truck. All you know, five ten minutes of it. But I'm liking it. So there you go guys, that's the whole walk around of the truck. You know, it doesn't seem much when you do the walk around what we've actually done, but we've actually done this in six weeks. There's, um, from start to finish, that's sourcing the stuff, thinking about it, drinking beer, and actually doing it. We've actually got it done six weeks. In fact, it's six weeks to the day from when we started it, from when we chopped it to now is exactly six weeks. And I'm really happy. I can't wait to get the canopy built. I would love to get out and go somewhere now, but you know, we can't. So uh, that's it. That's the end of this video. As usual, thanks for watching guys. Really sorry about the interruption in the flow of videos, but we can't do anything about that. Um, it would help us out if you go over to the merchandise store and buy you know, some stickers or a t-shirt. That would really help at the moment. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.